Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a new video. So far, 2020 has provided us figure enthusiasts with an incredible selection of collectibles from new shows as well as old. And starting in this video, I'm going to be getting back into my usual practice of ranking the best figures as they come out each month. It kind of blows me away that we're already in July, but here we are. So without further ado, here are my picks for the top 15 new figures coming out this month. And it's only fair I give you guys 15 instead of 10. So hopefully you can forgive my extended hiatus because as of now, I am back. Now let's get started. Number 15, Chocola made by Mimeyoi from Nekopara. Some of you may recognize Nekopara as the visual novels available on Steam. They're actually 60% off right now as I'm making this video. Others may recognize it as the anime series that had its run at the start of the year. If you don't know either, Nekopara derives its name from the Japanese word Neko meaning cat and the English word paradise. It's a world where cat girls live among and are even owned by humans. And while there are many in the series, the main girl would undeniably be Chocola with Vanilla coming in a close second. And yes, it's one of those everyone has a type of food for a name series. This figure of Chocola is one of three debut figures from a new Japanese company, Mimeyoi, with Chinese company Hobby Max acting as producer. More on the others later in this video. Number 14, Hatsune Miku made by Taito from the Vocaloid series. Taito's partnership with Hatsune Miku has produced some of my favorite figures of her ever to come out. Granted, they are all prize figures, but oh, whoever is designing these, they really have their stuff together. And this one is shaping up to be no different. I actually have a decent amount of respect for Taito as a figure company. Quite often, other prize figures from companies like Ben Presto will look great in the prototype and stock pictures, but then looking at the finished product, they can have glaring flaws as a result of poor quality control. But every Taito figure I've ever bought has looked really fantastic once I've opened it up with no paint imperfections or gaps where it's joined, and I'm definitely going to be adding this Miku to my Taito collection. Number 13, Asuna made by B Fool from Sword Art Online. B Fool has become the culmination of sub companies Poultra, Fots Japan, Apricot Blossom, Figure X, and Insight all merging together to create one unified entity. And I'd say it's better this way, as previously they were all connected under one umbrella anyway. With all their assets and creators in one place, I'm excited to see what they can come up with. Their latest release is of Asuna as her Undine avatar from Alfheim Online. She comes in two versions, with the only difference being her hair being of a solid consistency and colour or a clear transparent one. Number 12, Luna made by Furyu from Shadowverse. I'm not super familiar with Shadowverse, apparently it's a free to play digital card game which quickly became one of the most popular and played games in Japan from 2016 onwards, and in April received a below average looking anime adaptation seemingly aimed more at kids. It's from the creators of Rage of Bahamut, another digital card game which also got adapted into an anime series. Anyway, from what I've gathered, you summon creatures from classes, one of them being Shadowcraft. Luna is a young necromancer belonging to the Shadowcraft class. I literally don't know anything beyond that, but regardless, I was drawn to her character design and I really like studying this figure. Her dress is really cool with the gems and patterns sewn into it. Finding out she was a necromancer did throw me though. Necromancy is dark and forbidden magic that raises the undead to serve as mindless slaves to carry out the master's bidding. And how fitting of a dark, evil and twisted sorcerer, forsaken from the world's forgiveness, to be a fair child holding a mouse toy. Yeah, I'm gonna go with mouse, I don't really know what else that could be. Number 11, Black Sister. Wait, is that really her name? <laughs> I guess it is. All right, we'll have to go with it. Black Sister, made by Freeing from Hyperdimension Neptunia. Freeing is the company that makes bunny girls. They do other things, but when I think of Freeing, I think of a company that makes bunny girls. They make them big too. Their go-to measurement is usually around one quarter scale, which for most figures puts them just under half a meter in height. So the photos really don't do justice for the size they actually are compared to seeing them in person. For fans of either the games or anime series of Hyperdimension Neptunia, Freeing is bringing out two bunnies. My pick would be Black Sister over Purple Sister, and again, that's literally their names. I prefer her drill, twin-tailed hairstyle, and her outfit just seems a bit nicer, a bit more flashy. The other cool thing about Freeing's bunny figures is their stockings. 
They use a real material, I'm guessing polyester, to make mini stockings and fit them on the girl's legs which really enhances the look and authenticity of the outfit. Number 10, Sonico made by Q's Q from Super Sonico. I am super pumped, no pun intended, for this figure to be coming out. Sonico has donned an array of costumes and poses over her time as a mascot character. Let's see, she's been a bride, a rock star, a cheerleader, a maid, Santa, a nurse, a sailor, a queen, an office worker, a space policewoman, a bear, Snow White, a child, a mermaid, a waitress, Hestia, a cowgirl, and now she's a cowgirl! Again! But not just any cowgirl, but one who's riding a nuclear bomb? It's based on a garage kit from Wonder Festival 2014. Q's Q changed the colour palette to a more pastel design and made the figure a touch bigger at 1 7th scale. And look, even though it took 6 years for a pre-painted release, I'm really glad we eventually got one. Number 9. Vanilla, made by Mimiyoi from Nekopara. This figure of Vanilla is the partner to Chocola mentioned earlier on the list. Although not in the show, I do think Vanilla surpasses Chocola here in figure form. Her face and pose look more aesthetic, especially from the front. From the back, it's anyone's game. The whole design behind these two is they're supposed to be race queens appearing on a formula track. I'm not sure if this happens in the source material, but either way, there's not a lot of difference from their regular maid outfits anyway. The only obvious ones being their stockings, their bare stomachs, and their sleeves. Fun fact, in Nekopata, all girls are required to wear a bell signifying they've passed their entrance exams and belong to a master. If they're not seen in public wearing the bell, they're considered strays and they can even be arrested. Number 8, Kamino Shizuku, made by Alpha Max. This figure is an original creation illustrated and conceptualised by popular artist Parsley, best known for their doujinshi art books and online illustrations. She is the latest figure of the Skytube line, which basically translates to... However, she's reasonably tame. Lewdness isn't the only thing that figures in the Skytube line have in common. The level of quality Alpha Max puts into their figures catering to this adult demographic is, in my opinion, second to none. She's a stunning figure from top to bottom. She comes with two alternate faceplates, you can remove her veil, among other things, and honestly, I love her 3D design. In my opinion, it supersedes the 2D concept art, which is above and beyond. That rarely happens, but this time they knocked it out of the park. Number 7, Yumami Riyamu, made by Illumina from the Idol Master Cinderella Girls. Riyamu was one of the new idols introduced in Cinderella Girls for the game's 7th anniversary, so she's a relatively new character. And this is her first figure by another new company out of Japan, Illumina. Like a lot of other Idol Master figures, it's derived from one of the in-game cards, in this case her Rare Plus card, and out of all of them, I'm really glad they picked this one. She's in a nurse cosplay with the blues and pinks of her dress and leg wears matching the colours in her hair. Illumina's first and only other figure of fellow idol Airi turned out really well and Good Smile Company even had enough faith in Illumina to act as their partnering distributor. So if that's anything to go by, I'm thinking this figure is going to turn out just as good. Number 6, Kitano Ken and Yoshizawa Yumi, made by Kitsune Statue from Sun Ken Rock. This statue is really cool for a number of reasons. First off, it's the debut figure of yet another new company, Kitsune Statue. They appear to be operating out of France, with their goal being to release high quality resin statues of characters from Japanese anime and manga. They've got a few on the way, including this Kaiba with this ultimate blue eyes white dragon, but as I mentioned, they're not just making characters from anime, they're also taking characters that exist purely within manga, and that's what these two are. And I think that's really cool. Very rarely does this actually happen. It's like comparing figures that are sourced from Western comic books or novels that haven't had a film or TV adaptation. It's very uncommon. I wouldn't even say Sun Ken Rock is an overly popular manga. It ran for close to a decade, but the story finished over four years ago. And so to dedicate such a high quality statue to a manga with a cult following and no television adaptation, it's a decision that I applaud. It's purely aimed at hardcore manga fans for this particular series, rather than garnering to something new with current momentum or a tried and true series that is proven to sell. 
It's a risk, but it's one that I hope pays off. It's refreshing to see a company be bold and appeal directly to a manga-only series. Number four and five, Chocola and Vanilla, created by Native from Nekopara. Starting now is when we get into the amazing territory. Both of these figures are sculpted by Grizzly Panda, one of my favourite, if not my favourite 3D artists and someone who I've been following for years. They have made some amazing works in the industry and these two are no exception. The level of detail here is just outstanding, I'm blown away by everything, I don't even know where to begin. Let's just start off with the face. The eyes of both figures are breathtaking. I love the reddened outlines that make them look just a little bit more sensitive, especially in Vanilla's case. The next thing I love is the hair, particularly around the front of the fringe of Chocola. The brown highlights are so good and it's just thin enough that from a distance it begins to resemble a softer hair-like quality. And then there's the outfits. As you can see, both figures have a bare chest, which obviously I'm going to cover up for this video, but they are both fully cast off, which I mean, hey, you do you. I really like the clothes and I really like the stockings. And I also love that these figures go together. These two share a scene where the chairs push together and the chains of their collars form a gold and silver heart. Number three, Ito Chitose, made by Alpha Max from Iapan. Oh, I love this series. The last few years, Echi has evolved. I'd nearly call it a de-evolution, but it has expanded into the lands that no man previously dare enter. So yeah, if you don't know what series this figure is from, you're probably not gonna like it, but I love me some Iapan. I welcome anyone that enjoyed Iapan, men or women, no bias. And I would love to see the other girls from Iapan in figure form, and apparently they're on their way. Thank you, Alpha Max, again, for giving me the figures I didn't know I needed. Number two, Hatsune Miku, made by Furiyu from the Vocaloid series. Isn't this figure just a beauty? I can't believe how stunning Miku looks here. First off, I just want to say how incredible this base and background piece is. More figures need to employ these kind of additions to their figures. In my opinion, it really makes them pop and stand out so much more. For example, if you compare her on her own to being in front of the floral arch, there's just no competition of which one you'd rather have. To my knowledge, this is a completely unique representation of Miku, and it just carries so much grace and elegance. She's easily fitting to have the number two spot because she could have had the number one spot. They're really interchangeable because at number one, we have Hatsune Miku, again from Furuyu. I mean, I don't really care which is number one and number two because both of these figures are amazing representations of Miku. This one has more of a, I don't quite know what you'd call it, maybe a carnival vibe? Something like that, something playful, colorful, and fun. The design's more flashy, I really like the independent stockings and shoes, her microphone has an olden candy parlor colour scheme, and she's wearing diamond face paint, hence why I think it's a carnival vibe. And again, the twisting neon cubes and the base adds a depth to the figure, something secondary to her being the main focal point. And I'm glad they included something like that in her design. And that was it for this video guys, what I consider to be the top 15 figures coming out in July. I'm really happy to be back. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one very soon. Take care. Until then.